What if your boyfriend fused into your body forever? Or your partner ruled over you like a queen? Welcome to the Animal Kingdom's Most Toxic Relationships. In this episode, we'll dive into all sorts of toxic relationships and the animals that exemplify them. Because love hurts, especially when it's venomous. Deep beneath the ocean, the male anglerfish takes clingy to a horrifying level. Consider this. A female anglerfish is 29 centimeters or 11 inches, while a male averages 2.8 centimeters or 1 inch. In addition to being extremely smaller than its female counterpart, the male anglerfish will have no digestive system to speak of after reaching a certain stage of maturity, meaning that it must find a female in order to survive, much like your ex-boyfriend. While the female anglerfish flashes a lure and uses its mouth to hunt, the male engages in parasitic attachment. It uses its little teeth to permanently bite down on the belly of a female. Over time, its body will fuse into hers. He loses his eyes, his fins, and his internal organs dissolve. Essentially, just becoming another part of her body that is dependent on her bloodstream. It is the ultimate loss of independence. You just can't convince me that men are not parasites. They are literal parasites. That is right. They glom onto a woman in order to extract value out of her. Exactly. You tell him, girl. Bowerbird, nature's master manipulator. Males construct dazzling bowers or nests with bright objects to impress females. They dance and use their eyes to mesmerize. But the real trick? lies in the sound. These males mimic the calls of their rivals and produce fake sounds and weave them into their performance. Studies have shown that males with larger and more accurate mimicry repertoires are more successful at attracting mates. This complex display can overwhelm and misdirect females. So, Male bowerbirds are just like a guy on a dating app that claims to be 6'5", which I, I totally am. Antichitis, or broad-footed marsupial mice. Now, to be clear, despite their look, that is in no way a mouse. It is a marsupial. This particular marsupial doesn't really do anything in moderation. During the mating season, he will go nonstop for weeks. No eating, no sleeping, just pure obsession. And then when he's done, he dies. The females are left alone and exhausted, but they'll continue to reproduce with other males, assuring genetic diversity. This creature shows what love bombing looks like at its deadliest. Goodbye, friends. I never thought I would die like this, but I'd always really hoped. The male box crab will literally hold the female hostage during molting, carrying them around, preventing rivals from mating with them, even protecting them from predators. One of their ways of keeping them safe is to bury them in the sand. The males will frequently bury their partner before they even bother burying themselves. While this may seem like chivalry, it's more about possession. The female is essentially just being moved around by a larger male counterpart. Meanwhile, the males will even steal female crabs from other males. He just showed up and took my wife. Granted, I took her from another male crab, but that was my wife. Now, I will never see her again. Oh, look at the time. I feel like we are making progress, but... As your therapist, I need to schedule your appointment during the time you paid for. The platypus may seem cute, even adorable, but during mating, there are some aggressive tendencies that can occur in the species. Male platypuses undergo physiological changes that can side with increased aggression and territorial behavior. In a previous video, we covered the venomous spur that all male platypuses have. To summarize, the venomous spur on the hind leg makes the male platypus quite literally toxic, and it is primarily used not for self-defense, 
but to fight off other males during mating season. In fact, males have been noted engaging in vigorous fights with one another, often grappling and thrashing near the water's edge. These fights can lead to painful spur wounds. These wounds can cause severe pain and even temporary paralysis. After such combat, the injured male may be seen scratching themselves and showing the physiological toll of these battles. The courtship itself involves a complex sequence in which the male tries to grip the female's tail with his bill. If she's unwilling, she will most likely swim away, typically avoiding the male by swimming through logs and other obstacles. Meanwhile, a willing female will typically curl her tail. Now, one would assume such an aggressive male that is willing to go so far to find a female would want to stay and help protect the offspring. Platypus mating is a brief interaction, after which the female is left alone to build her burrow, incubate her eggs, and raise the young, investing several months in caretaking, while the males will just sneak off and try to find other mates. There is no parental care or pair bond in this species. Males are completely absent, just like my dad. No list of toxic relationships in the animal kingdom would be complete without this handsome man right here. Well, you might not think he's very attractive, but to her, that guy right there is a real snack. Now, female praying mantises are known for cannibalizing their male counterparts during the mating process. And although this does occur frequently by eating their heads, in praying mantids that exhibit sexual cannibalism, it occurs in 13 to 28% of natural encounters in the field, thus imparting significant mortality on males during the breeding season. From Dr. William D. Brown and Dr. Catherine L. Barry. The male mantises can escape and frequently do. The more reproductively successful ones are the ones that stay longer to be consumed because she can keep the process going even after the head's been removed. We're too broke for a cannibal by Keisha, which would have matched with the mantis part of the video. So we made our own with a broken laptop, dollar store mic and free stock footage of people in an Named after the Titan Atlas from Greek mythology, the Atlas Moth is one of the largest moths in the world, with a wingspan that ranges from 25 to 30.5 centimeters, with the females being larger than males. Now, once they emerge from their cocoons, the moth is focused on only one particular thing. The female will release pheromones to attract males. Once the males detect it, they will travel several kilometers away. After mating, the female will lay about 200 to 300 eggs on the underside of leaves. The thing about the moths is that they have vestigial mouth parts, meaning that their mouths no longer work. They can no longer eat. You might be wondering how the moth can survive, and the answer is, they don't. Once they emerge from their cocoons, they focus on mating, and then afterwards, the female lays her eggs and starves to death. The male will fly away, looking for another partner, but eventually he too will perish. After 10 to 14 days, out of the eggs will emerge caterpillars and the cycle will restart again. I am so hungry. I could go for another husband. What about you, Atlas? I literally haven't eaten since childhood. Inside a naked mole rat colony, social life revolves around a dominant female, known as the queen, who exercises control over every member of the group. The queen is physiologically larger than other mole rats, and her size increases with each pregnancy. 
enabling her to produce a sizable litter and maintain her rule. The most important rule of the mole rat colony is only the queen breeds. Typically, she will mate with one to three males, although she can take as many partners as she wants. All of the other male and female members of the colony are hormonally suppressed, remaining in non-reproductive or a prepubescent state their entire lives. This reproductive suppression is enforced through the queen's aggressive behavior, including patrolling and physical bullying to keep the subordinates stressed. Naked mole rats are the only mammal to display a social structure similar to ants, bees, and termites, with a single breeder and many sterile helpers. The queen's dominance isn't just about control, however. By enforcing cooperation through biological means, she assures that there is an efficient division of labor and a stable functioning group. When the queen dies or is removed, a violent power struggle will erupt, with the females competing to become the new queen. The winner of this competition will undergo physiological changes to her body, and her reproductive organs will enlarge. She will begin to breed and establish a new regime. It is worth noting that if you were born a male, you're never going to be in charge. Does this hat make my head look small? Actually, it... I did not ask for your opinion. Just tell me what I want to hear. Oh, yes. Sorry, my queen. Thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, and if there's an animal you'd like us to cover, let us know in the comments section. As always, this is Ivar with Zoological, wishing you all a wonderful day.